welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. Back in November, I looked at the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS, which is called Bullseye. And as I reported at the time, it's a great update, but it did leave some of us with some legacy support issues, particularly if we were trying to use a camera. And it's now great to report that Raspberry Pi have done something about this. In fact, they've done two particular things about this. First of all, they've now made it possible to use the legacy camera interface in Bullseye. And secondly, they've launched another version of Raspberry Pi OS called Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, for when backwards compatibility is still critical. So let's go and take a closer look. Right. Here we are running the Bullseye edition of Raspberry Pi OS on a 2 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. And if we go to the Chromium browser, I've loaded in the page from raspberrypi.com where they tell us all about the new old functionality and the launch of Raspberry Pi Legacy. And also if we scroll down here quite a bit, how we can enable the old camera interface in Bullseye. Where is it? Just down here under also. And I'm going to start with enabling the old legacy camera interface because that might at first hand appear to be the problem to all the issues we've been facing with a camera in Bullseye. So let's start with that. And to do that, let's just close that down. There we are. And if we now just open up a terminal like that, and I'd note I've got a Raspberry Pi high quality camera connected to the Pi, as you can see. So if in the terminal we go to execute this command, the Raspberry Pi still command to take a picture which would be called pic.jpg, if we try to execute that command, which we've been using to take pictures on a Raspberry Pi for years and years and years from the terminal, if we execute this command, it doesn't work, we get an error. Although interestingly, it's not the same error we first got when we tried to use Raspberry Pi still in Bullseye. And of course, we can take a picture perfectly satisfactorily here in Bullseye in the terminal, we just have to use a command compatible with the new camera interface, which would be like this. And if we enter on that, hopefully, there we are, we've got a preview across the room looking through the Raspberry Pi high quality camera and it'll take a picture. And that's fine, save for the fact that all Raspberry Pi code and tutorials until this point in time has been written to work with the previous camera interface. And the other legacy issue we're addressing here is to do with the use of Python to access a camera on a Raspberry Pi. Here I've got a bit of code from my recent Raspberry Pi time-lapse video. And if we try to run this piece of code, which uses the Pi camera library, if we try to run this code, we will get an error. It says no module named Pi camera because it's not available in Bullseye because Bullseye uses the new camera interface by default. So, what happens if we try to turn on the old camera interface? What happens with these issues? Well, to do this, we open up a terminal. There we are. And we can now run the Raspberry Pi configuration utility by typing a sudo and a raspi and config like that. And just before we do this, I'd note, you can only enable the old camera interface on the latest version of Bullseye. So if you can see an update icon on your panel, please click it and select Install Updates, because if you don't, you may well not be able to do what I'm about to show you. Anyway, that point noted about updating, let's run the Raspberry Pi config like that, and uh, here it is. And I do like this coming up. It just reminds me of old style computing when we were doing all the things effectively in a terminal interface. So much more exciting. Anyway, here what we need to do is to go down to interface options, number three. And we need to select the first option, which is legacy camera enable disable, as we can see here. So we'll select that. Would we like to enable legacy camera support? Yes, please, we would. Isn't it polite? We'll do that. There we are. Legacy camera support is enabled. Although, as it does remind us here, this functionality is deprecated. It won't be supportive of future development. But I'm happy with that, so we'll just press OK. And then we'll just tab down to finish like that. And then it says, do we want to reboot now? Yes, we do. So we'll now reboot the Pi. And here we are back again. So let's now go back into the terminal like that. And the command last in the buffer obviously will be our config command, but there we've got the lib camera command. That should not work anymore. We'll just check it doesn't. It shouldn't do because we've just turned off a new interface. And yes, it clearly doesn't work. 
But if we now go back to use the command, the raspi still command from the old camera interface, it should work. What do you think? Yes, it does work. We've got a preview using Raspberry Pi still, the command we've been using to take pictures in the Raspberry Pi terminal interface for years and years and years. However, and it's very important, however, this does not deal with everything because if we run up the Genie programmer's editor like that, and by default it'll bring back in the code we had previously, and we execute this code, it still doesn't work because we still haven't got a module called Pi Camera in Python here in Bullseye. And this is why Raspberry Pi have also released a legacy edition of the operating system. Greetings! Here I am, back again, now running Raspberry Pi OS Legacy. And if we go to the software page on the raspberrypi.com website, all about Raspberry Pi OS, and we scroll down a bit, first of all it tells us about using the imager to get Raspberry Pi OS, we'll come back to that in a second, but beneath that we've got the option to see all the download options for a manual install. And if we click on that, it takes us to this page, whereas we can now see we have available Raspberry Pi OS and Raspberry Pi OS Legacy. And if we scroll down to these, first of all, we see the standard Raspberry Pi OS, the recommended version for most users, which is available with a desktop, with a desktop and recommended software, or as a light version without a desktop. And then below this, we have the option to download Raspberry Pi OS Legacy in one of two versions, either with a desktop or without, but not with a desktop and all the recommended software. But we can certainly live with that. And as you can see, this is described as a stable version of Raspberry Pi OS Buster, the previous version of Raspberry Pi OS, for people who need the Raspberry Cam apps, the Pi Camera Python library, or the OMX Media Player, which is not available in Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. It's worth noting in the release notes here, in Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, you do get the latest version of the Linux kernel and the Raspberry Pi firmware, but the version of the Chromium browser that's installed is not the one with hardware acceleration, which you get in Raspberry Pi OS Bullseye. And this is because maintaining the hardware accelerated version would be very time consuming because every time Chromium changes, they'd have to change it, which is why we don't get that. So do be aware, if you want to play YouTube on your Pi, it's best not to be using the legacy version of Raspberry Pi OS. I said we'd just see what happens when we look at the Raspberry Pi imager. So I've got that installed here. If we go down to accessories and there we are, Raspberry Pi imager. We'll just bring that up like that. And in fact, we'll maximize it so we've got a chance to see everything. And if we chose an operating system here, by default, we'll be offered Bullseye, the recommended version of Raspberry Pi OS. We can get to legacy, although it's a bit strange. It's actually hidden away down here. To open up other, and then we can see down here, legacy. And the reason I find this slightly concerning is it means that someone coming to the Pi from scratch, they've got a Raspberry Pi for the first time, they're setting up an operating system on a micro SD card. There's no indication here you might want to use a previous version of Raspberry Pi OS if you're using a camera, which I think will still cause some people some issues. Anyway, that's where we are. And if we look in the menu here, you'll see we've got a reasonable number of things installed. We've got our programming tools there, the Genie Programmers Editor and Sony also for programming. We've got the Chromium browser, we've got the VLC media player, image viewer, the accessories you would expect, and the preference settings you would expect as well. But what we don't have here, for example, is installed LibreOffice, although we could easily add that if we wanted to. Anyway, the reason we're here is because of the camera. And if you want to use a camera in Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, as in all the versions before Bullseye, you should always check the camera is enabled first. So go down to Raspberry Pi configuration, and our camera under interfaces is enabled. It's not enabled by default, so make sure it's enabled when you want to use a camera. And with that there, if we open up a terminal, we can hopefully find we can do a raspy still to take a picture. We can, all is working fine. The world is with us, that is good. There we are, that's finished off. And ideally, we should be able to use now some Python code with Pi Camera. So I'll bring up my bit of a time-lapse code here in uh, Genie, and we'll just uh, run that. And it's working. What it's doing is uh, bringing up a preview, taking a picture, waiting however many seconds it's going to be. It'll take another picture, etc., etc. We won't sit here for hours letting it do that. We will come out of that, 
and will prove it's working by going to where it's saving its frames, which I think is in videos and frames. And yes, we've got the first frame here, which is not a block of ice as I was taking a time lapse of previously, but it's the image we're taking across the room. Now, this is all fine, but there's one thing I want to point out, and the eagle eye of you may have spotted already, which is I've changed the code from what you saw previously when I was using this. I've changed our camera resolution to 1920 1080, not 4056 to 3040, which is the maximum resolution of the Raspberry Pi high quality camera. And the reason I've done that is because if I take out the, uh, that from being a comment, and we'll put that to being a comment, so we've switched resolution back to the highest resolution, and we'll save this file like that. If I run this, it doesn't work. It crashes, and it crashes at that point here when it's trying to set the resolution, which is a bit of a shame. But if we put it back, as you can see, to a lower resolution like that and like that, things will now work perfectly. So maybe the camera driver here is the one before the Raspberry Pi high quality camera was released. I don't know, but it's just worth being aware of that, that there is this little niggle in Raspberry Pi OS legacy, which is otherwise a great solution for people who need to use Pi camera in Python. Raspberry Pi OS legacy and legacy camera interface support in Bullseye are very welcome indeed. And I'm very grateful to Raspberry Pi for making them available, as I'm sure are many other members of the Raspberry Pi community. And I know that Raspberry Pi, in their initial post about this, did say that, you know, it's a strange situation because they've always had one supported version of Raspberry Pi OS. Now they've got two. They've got people using different camera interfaces in the latest edition. This is not what they wanted. I totally understand that. The world gets more complicated with operating systems and compromises are needed all over the place. And this whole issue has got me thinking more generally about the weird situation we've got ourselves into almost as a species when it comes to computers and operating systems. Because operating systems are always a work in progress. Operating systems are so complicated, they have to be released before all the bugs have been found. And then when they've been released, people keep finding bugs and fixing them. We therefore get security patches. Or in other words, when we have an operating system, we expect to constantly get updates to give us those security fixes. So as I said, an operating system is never finished. We always expect, or we should expect, if we want it to be secure, for it to have continual support. And that's an issue because we've got used to having operating systems for free, whether it's from Microsoft with Windows, with, with constant support, pretty much you get it for free with a machine these days. We may buy our license, but by and large, Windows is now seen as free. Linux is clearly seen as free. And yet, we expect the people who make the Linux distros, the communities, companies like Raspberry Pi, to just keep putting effort in to maintaining operating systems for us, which we're not paying for. That is really weird. There is no other product where we expect to have constant support forever without having to put something into the process. And it's therefore not surprising we have issues coming up like we've seen recently with Raspberry Pi OS and the, and the solutions we've now seen. This is going to keep going on in the world of computing until we have another model for how we support and pay for our operating systems. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.